All right, welcome back to East New Mexico season five. We have plowed through our regular season. We had just destroyed everybody. None of the games are close. And they just didn't feel like fun to watch. It was just business getting down the field, scoring a lot of points. The defense was really, really strong. And we finally figured out how to play some offense this year. So I think we have a lot of positives to finish this year off and to start next year. We're gonna end against number five, Oregon. We maintained a top 10 ranking the entire season. Oregon was number two for a long time, then lost. And now here we are, number nine versus number five. This is for a shot at a BCS title game. And let's go look at the top 25. So looking at the top 25, there's been a lot of upheaval here. USC and Michigan are number one. Michigan beat Ohio State. Texas is still up there. Florida took a loss. Oregon took a loss. We have a chance to jump a lot of these teams if we can get this win. Not many people are still playing. Most have a bye. We can look down through all the records here. We didn't really have much going on. We have uh, Tiger Hall here for the Bedneric, but we were not competitive in all areas. Quinn naturally top there for tight end of the year. Also with William Hill right on his heels. We had a lot better passing this year. But nobody really outside of Hall and Quinn are up for any major awards. We're just, we, we played as a team and we won as a team. All right, let's turn our attention to our stats this year. Plummer had his best year as a senior. 166 completions on 249 attempts for 3,100 yards, 33 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, 287 yards a game, and a 66% completion rate. His numbers overall look a lot better than they did last year, which is still a really good year for him. And we still have one regular season game to go, so he's just gonna push these numbers even further. We put Do Doherty in a couple times. Doherty, I think that's how we say it. You can see he was nine for 10 for 213 and three touchdowns and some mop-up time. But where he really excelled, this is something that we did, is we put Doherty into a lot of our option plays. So we see we have Monroe here, 1,300 yards, 18 touchdowns, nothing to sneeze at. Definitely not justice numbers, but he came in clutch when it mattered. But look at these numbers here from Paul Doherty. 416 yards, seven touchdowns on 26 attempts. They weren't ready for it. It seems like the, the teams we played against weren't ready for a switch at quarterback, especially when we went option, and he would just blow right past them. Receiving, we have a lot of numbers here. This is more than we've had in any season. Maurice Ryan, a true freshman wide receiver who came in because the starting wide, wide receiver, Vincent, he's out for the season. So we lost him the first week of the season. Maurice Ryan, our fastest wide receiver, is on his way to a thousand yard season with eight touchdowns. Quinn still putting up great numbers. Nothing like last year's amazing season where he had over a thousand yards. He's got 10 less touchdowns, but still 766 yards, six touchdowns, good numbers. Quinn Thomas is the other freshman receiver, 622 yards on 34 catches, eight touchdowns. And William Hill has been playing a lot of our third wide receiver in slot because he's just fast and he's big and corners just cannot compete with him. Defensive side, Pleasant has been playing lights out right there with Tiger Hall. They're on the same side of the ball. So as you see right there, that is 54 sacks between two men on one side. A lot of that's not even user controlled. Some of that's just the computer. Kinsley Dennis, our senior middle linebacker, having another great year, just watching that middle, playing really strong, five interceptions. And we have Cody Hill and Curtis Bradford both taking home a defensive touchdown. We have Hall and Carter here splitting time on kick returns, both with around 300 yards, and then Hall with a touchdown. Punt returns though, it's been all Carter and he's got two touchdowns on 39 returns. Peeking in because most of the teams are done with the exception of Oregon and a few others that play on the final week of the season. We're gonna look at some of our players. I forgot to mention who I put in last season. Uh, the recording didn't take, so it'll be a surprise to you now. And I think you'll be surprised with how well they did. 84 attempts, almost 500 yards and 10 touchdowns. That's amazing. Hopefully he becomes a starter next year. We'll see. Tim Tebow is having an another amazing season. He's gone for over 3,000 yards and 36 touchdowns, 16 interceptions, the least of his career, best completion percentage, and 600 yards on the ground, seven touchdowns. He has been driving that Iowa State offense. 
And I think he's had a really good career. I think it shows that Tim Tebow, no matter where you put him, was a great playmaker. RG3 in his third year starting has almost 2,600 yards. Well, almost 3,000. 26, 22, 29 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. He's had trouble getting those interceptions under control, but a 60% completion rate. Rushing 500 yards, four touchdowns. You can almost say it's a down year, but I think he'll take these numbers as USC right now is number two in the nation and undefeated. So this year I wanted to give two guys a fresh start. And the first one I gave was Ryan Leaf because Ryan Leaf, he had a decent season, decent career at Washington State, but then he flamed out. We put him from Great Falls, Montana, just like he was in real life. And those are his numbers roughly uh, for a senior back in NCAA 96, 97, with the exception of his awareness. We put that awareness down, his throwing accuracy is down a little bit too. He hasn't played a single game yet. He may have been redshirted, I'm not 100% sure. But looking at the rest of their, their squad here, he's a shoe in the fight for quarterback. They got two guys that are going to graduate. So looking at Nebraska's depth, Samuel and Harburg are gonna graduate and it leaves May and Leaf to compete for that starting position. And the last guy we put in was Denard Robinson. I wanted to see if he can have a better career than he did at Michigan. I wanted to see who would pick him up. He was a five-star recruit that Michigan was able to pull, but he didn't get out of the state of Florida this year. You see his numbers leading Florida, they were undefeated at number one for most of the season so they took a late loss. 2,600 yards, 29 touchdowns, 16 interceptions, 60% completion rating. Michigan would have loved to have Dernard Robinson over 60% like that. And then look at his rushing, almost 1,000 yards and nine touchdowns. These are very comparable numbers that he had while he was in his prime at the University of Michigan. With the exception of the completion ratio, I think he's got better completion right now than he did at Michigan. But these are great numbers and he's just a freshman. So I'm excited to see what happens with him. Heading into the final game of the season at Autzen Stadium, you have the East New Mexico Orcs against the Oregon Ducks. Two teams that are very similar in culture, very similar in uniform styles, and very similar in stats too. Points per game, they're right up there. We're at 45, they're at 43. Their total offense is ranked fourth, and they have the number seven ranked passing offense, and ours is ranked number six. But where we shine and where we Hang our hat is the speed on our defense. Our defense has been amazing. Now granted, some of these numbers are a little, you can't say inflated because they're not high, but they're pumped up by the fact that we're in the whack. If we lose, we are kissing our BCS birds goodbye. But if we win, we have a chance to argue, to argue, to be in the top five, possibly the top two. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Right now, we've got to head to Oregon and we've got to play this game. Let's get into it. Well, the first thing we gotta do is we gotta get this crowd under control. We've gotta stop this offense before they get started. That's a good stop right there. Another thing that's neat about this team is that we're very similar in uniform style. So I gave Oregon their alternate all blacks and we're wearing our alternate all whites. I didn't want any confusion while we're out here playing football. And that's Williams. Does he have a clean lane? Oh, that'll shut the crowd up. That's Williams on the board. Touchdown, Oryx. The defense showing up early. He had the pressure. He didn't have time to reset himself, and he threw it right into Williams' hands. We learned two things on that opening drive. They're going to want to throw this ball. They want to throw this ball. All right, we got a big third down. Bring a nickel and a linebacker blitz. And he caught it. He threaded that needle, wow. All right, I am trusting my corners one-on-one. -on -one. Man coverage, we're bringing this pressure. That was the right call. That was the right call. Fourth down, give us the ball back. So if we've had any problems with our team. It's been communication in loud stadiums like this. It's been fumbles and it's been drops. If we can stop the fumbles and mitigate the drops.
We'll be okay. Nice run by Monroe. Here we go, play action. Nice catch by Ryan. Nice catch. When he gets good hands on the ball, he can't be stopped. Nice little catch by Monroe. We spread the ball around now. We give it to everybody. Second and 10, we're gonna go option. This is where we bring Doherty in. He brings a new element to this option and he can throw. You have to respect his throwing routes. It's third down. We have good control of the football right now. We're gonna struggle to get this one off. Oh, why didn't we throw it? We had that open. We had that. Oh, I'm frustrated. I'm content going for this one. I'm content going for this one. There we go. Thomas with the catch. He's just sitting in that zone. Now we got first down. Roughly the 25th, 26th yard line. Oh, Monroe's got the angle. They just got caught up, and that's another touchdown. Shush the crowd. Shush the crowd. We wear these uniforms better than they do. Look, they just got stuck in the middle. We had good blocks. They got stuck. Monroe's off to the races. So now, after that nice long drive, the defense is well rested. We have the momentum. It's on them to score. And we both missed that one. Here we go. Just got to keep it in front of us. Oh, we almost had it. All right, punt it back. They're out of rhythm. I don't buy that he didn't hear that. No, he got that. He made that play. Good job, freshman. We're going to close this game out. Plummer made a great throw. He had the step. That's all he needed. Touchdown. Uh-oh, we're not going to get there in time, are we? There we go. We got there. We, we snuffed that out. I took the running back. Leonard had the quarterback. There was no stopping it. We're leaving them no time to make plays. Another second and long. Oh, he caught that. Leonard should have had that. I should have just let him keep it. We're going to move Dennis and Maldonado around here. That's a fumble. That's ours. That's Carter's. He's got a train. He's got a train. They're not catching him. They're not catching him. That's two defensive touchdowns today. This is what our defense does. This is what we needed to do against Oklahoma. Still frustrates me. That's our only blemish on the year. It's a second defensive touchdown for the Oryx. I'm gonna spread it out. They run up the middle, they run up the middle, but so far that's not what they look like they wanna do. They can't even hold on to the ball. We are living rent-free in their head right now. Oh, that's not a pick. So we got third and six, and we're gonna bring Doherty back in, and we're gonna run the option, see if we can get him, find the mismatch. There we go. Hold on to the ball, Monroe. Nice first down. 
Maybe we'll just give Doherty this last minute and a quarter here. No, I didn't mean to do this. Oh, well. Ooh. Maybe we'll let Doherty throw. Ooh, go up. Look at Thomas with the catch. Busted play and we still made something happen. So we're going play action. And I really think I can get it over the top here. We got Ryan. Definitely looks like it's one on one. Oh, what's the flag? Is it holding? It's probably holding. No. They hit us late. We'll take it. All right, so I'm just going to be goofy. Oh, we had it. Oh, we had it. We had it and we blew it. Let's go for the field goal. So after one half of football, we're putting a clinic on again. We're going back to the play action. See, they're so bad. We just gotta get them back in position. They're, they're not affecting us like they were. That's Hill. Two best tight ends in football right now. We're gonna close this out. We're putting this game away. We're gonna prove that we belong. Number nine is not who we are. We are better than that. So I am really happy to see Will Plummer just exceeding this year. And just being able to throw the ball everywhere and just have a great time. And that's our ball again. We went over the top last play. So we're gonna run it this time. Let's let him be confused. Monroe's pretty strong, not bad. We got a lot of freshmen playing a lot of spots here. Look at Doherty here. Nice play, pitching at the last section and then just, you know, tight roping it up there. Good stuff. We got an out route. He's got it. That man-to-man -man coverage can't handle a comeback route. We're gonna try and throw it to Hill. Maybe Quinn. Hill was open and the blocking wasn't there. Well, hopefully he can play in the bowl game. I hope you're ready. Fourth down. Fourth down. You weren't getting a good throw off with that pressure. So Plummer's back. <laughs> oh, that's sloppy. Oh man, we gotta stop this one. I don't want a touchdown. Let's go, guys. That's a pick, put it away. Put it away. That's defense, boys. Look at the dime guy coming in. No, that's our safety Maldonado. I thought it was our dime back. Oh, Quinn's wide open. Quinn's got some space. If he was a faster guy, he would have broke that one. Good play. I want to throw the ball. And that's Quinn with the catch again. Good job, seniors. Well, I'll give them credit. 
They're doing a lot better in this second half. However, we're not pressing as hard as we were either. That's a first down by Doherty. That's a big boy play for a freshman. We're going with the old fullback fake. Pitch. Nothing there. That's okay. So they aren't covering my wide receivers. Uh-oh. We're just going to run it in. Big senior making the throw. We couldn't get what we wanted happen. We'll take it. This game is over 45 to nothing. Another shutout. Another shutout against a top 10 opponent. With the exception of that Oklahoma game, man, we've done everything we can. I can only imagine where we'd be sitting in the top 25. We'd probably be in the top five. Number one, number two, maybe number three. Definitely within there if we didn't lose that game to Oklahoma. But man, I want to see what happens. Let's see where we stand after conference uh, play, after the conference championship. So there it is, yet another whack title. So walking into championship weekend, we are ranked sixth. And there's a Florida, Alabama, and this Iowa State. Look at Tim Tebow trying to play upset spoiler to Texas. So these two games could really matter in the grand scheme of things. Let's see how this one plays out. If Florida loses, uh, we may flip flop. We may move, Alabama may move, who knows? Who knows what's gonna happen? Florida doesn't leave at the chance, and they take their W. Texas is the only one that has a shot of breaking into the, the national title game. I'm pretty certain it's going to be a Michigan-USC championship game. Let's see what happens. And Tim Tebow lead him to a Big 12 title. Good job, Tim Tebow. 11-2 his senior year. I think he did really good. Uh, let's see. Look at the scores here. Was it him? Tebow took the score to take the lead. Two-yard run by Tebow, pass by Tebow. So Tim Tebow was the man. He made everything happen. Let's look at his numbers. So he was 16 for 27, two touchdowns, interception. And then he also ran for 52 yards and a touchdown. So knocking Texas out, that will bump us. We're not, we're not playing for a national title. Rose Bowl, maybe? Sugar Bowl? We should be a BCS team regardless. Let's look at our award winners. Let's see who won awards. So, Tiger Hall has won the Lombardi Award, best defensive player. And Will Hill came from the back. It was Quinn's to lose, but Hill had more touchdowns, and he is tight end of the year. And Hall also won the Chuck Bednarik. And we're going to the Rose Bowl. Wow. We're going to the Rose Bowl, and we're going to play the Buckeyes. That means that USC and Michigan are playing for a national title. So we have a chance to go to the granddaddy of them all and really lay it to a perennial powerhouse. I can't think of a better way to cap off the season than beating Ohio. Bernard Robinson, <laughs> freshman, wins the Heisman Trophy. Tim Tebow never won a Heisman. Never won a Heisman. This was close, but he did not take it. Wow. 30, uh, 2,900 yards, 973 yards on the ground, 39 total touchdowns. He made moves for his team. They're not Robinson. This is what happens when you play for a top two team. You're, you're a Heisman Trophy candidate and now a winner as a freshman. So this is going to be an intense game. We got to have everything go right for us. We're the number one scoring team. They're the number two total defense team. Look at their pass numbers. They only let 131 yards over the, the air. They're number four, number two in rushing. We're the number one team. They don't turn the ball over. They're very even. They don't give it up much. They don't take it much. We're about even, around 430 yards each when it comes to total offense. They run the ball a little more than us, and we throw the ball a lot more than they do. This is going to be a great game. We are playing in the granddaddy of them all. We are going to the Rose Bowl. I'm excited. I'm excited to play in the Rose Bowl. I'm really excited to take it to Ohio. You know, in real life, I'm a big Michigan guy. We just whooped up on Ohio. 
they snuck their way back into the college football playoff. If I can take it to this team, it just, it just feels right. Plus, we have a 10-game winning streak on the line. This is going to be fun. I am excited. Next time we meet, we're playing a Rose Bowl.